A reading from the book of Proverbs. Thus says the wisdom of God. The Lord possessed me the beginning of his ways, the forerunner of his prodigies of long ago. From of old I was poured forth at the first before the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains or springs of water, before the mountains were settled into place, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet the earth and fields were not made, nor the first clods of the world. When the Lord established the heavens, I was there. When he marked out the vault over the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he fixed fast the foundations of the earth, when he set for the sea its limit so that the waters should not transgress his command. Then was I beside him as a craftsman, and I was his delight day by day, playing before him all the while, playing on the surface of his earth, and I found delight in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and mercy who is kind and slow to anger God is good in every way and full of compassion I will praise your name
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we even boast of our afflictions, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of Truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that is that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For some reason, I don't know why or for what, I listened today to some testimonies of Arturo Mari. Did you hear about Arturo Mari? Arturo Mari is the uh, very most famous photographer in the world because he took more than a million pictures of John Paul II and for five popes he was taking uh, photos. Anyway, and he uh, witnessed a lot of events that happened that people don't know and still are um, kind of being uh, known by more people. And he mentioned once that, uh, <laughs> it's a cute story, that's why I decided to use it for, for the family, for this homily. And uh, John Paul II used to visit every parish in Rome on Sundays. So one Sunday, uh, he went to visit uh, the parish not far from Vatican, uh, 10 minutes, Arturo Mari is always with the Pope, taking pictures and people who are greeting him, and he's always very close, three meters from, from, from the Pope. So he says that, you know, uh, John Paul II comes in the, the, the church and greets people on the left, on the right, on the left, on the right. Um, uh, and all of a sudden when he backs up, something kicked him in his, in his leg. He looked, and there is a little boy, like maybe seven years old boy, and 
and he says, shh. Well, then Paul is here. So when John Paul Wilson gets there, he stands up and he says, hi, how are you doing? John Paul says, I'm doing fine. How are you? You know what I did? I don't know. That's a dialogue between the little one and Paul, John, Paul II. I don't know. What did you do? Uh, I just, you know, you have those guards, but I could get between them and I got here, under the legs here. <laughs> okay, you know, it's, uh, John Paul sa says, no, uh, I admire your, your, your uh, you know, skills, but it's, uh, it's not really uh, good to sneak around. But you know what happened? I had to escape from my home today. What? What happened? You escaped? Yes. And he asked Pope, uh, do you know women? <laughs> John Paul says, uh, yes, I know many women. But you know what, what they do always when we leave the house, what they do? They go to the bathroom and they go, <laughs> makeup. My mom was supposed to take me earlier, and she was in the bathroom doing this I couldn't wait for her, I decided to escape. It's not far, two blocks, I got here. And mom was supposed to be with me, but she, I don't know where she is. And he says, and I have something for you. And he gets in the pocket, gets something like this. Bob gets his hand like this, he pulls, closes, opens. It's a candy. This is my gift for you. Paul John Paul II kisses the candy, touches to his heart. I did not deserve it, he says to him. Beautiful story about how John Paul II, because the point of Arturo Mari, who was talking uh, endlessly about how he showed us God's presence in a very ordinary way. How his Holiness was very present before they declared him Saint John Paul II. How many miracles already the book says, the books say that it's already like thousands and thousands miracles done by John Paul II constantly. Especially for those who deal with uh, um, illnesses and many, many beautiful children came to this world by praying to him. When the couple couldn't have the baby, miracle would happen. Anyway, today is the Holy Trinity, the mystery of God. And we would think that how much do we know about God? How much should we know about God? If I go through all the classes, from pre-K to high school and going to, to the classes with religion, catechists, uh, catechism and everything, if I go through RCIA, do I know more about God? Do I know everything about God? That's what I need? And then you realize, no, it's not about that. God is not present in the books. Yes, He's present. This is theology to know about God. But He wants us to know His presence by being with Him. It's like about knowing someone from the TV or from the book. But what an amazing story when you meet this person in person. And you can see that's how God wants to be present in us. And we call it mysticism. When you have moments of God's presence, when everything becomes so light, so beautiful, because God is beauty. God is the essence of the beauty. Peace, joy. The more of God's presence in us, the more peace in us. And everybody else, and the world is beautiful.
There is a beautiful story about some conference that happened in California. A lot of professors, scientists came. They talked about religion and faith. I mean, science and faith. The most profound statement gave some rabbi who, at the same time, he is a professor of some uh, branch of science, but his point was how God is present in the science, in the universe, in us. As we know, he says in this presentation, we cannot live without breathing. Last Sunday, when Jesus comes to the apostles, he breathed on them. And the word that was used, as you remember, was the same word that from the book of Genesis, when God created human being. And nothing else but this human being got this breath of life. He breathed soul, spirit. And he says the most sacred word in the Bible, the whole Bible, is the name for God, which is in Hebrew, Yahweh. But you have to go through many years of studying Hebrew to understand how to pronounce this name. As we know, that's why from that uh, respect to holy name of God, Jewish people didn't use Yahweh, they used uh, Adonai, which is Lord. That's why we have this commandment, don't use Lord's name in vain. It's sacred. Don't use it in vain. And he says, in the silent audience, the name in Hebrew Yahweh, you're supposed to pronounce such a way that your tongue doesn't touch anything in your mouth. It becomes like breathing out and breathing in in the same way. Yahweh. Like now here, silence. And he says, just remember that. First thing what you do when you come to this world, you breathe God's name. And the, your last word that you say when you leave this world is also God word. Yahweh. God is a source of life. Without God we cannot, we cannot live. He's so present all the time. Just think about when you breathe every day, when you start your new day, when you think that God is constantly present in you. His peace, His love, His forgiveness, the same God that we cannot see now and one day we will see face to face. The same God who revealed Himself to Moses, to Abraham, to Jesus and through Jesus to us is so much present now. If you came to this church tonight with your problems, thoughts, maybe anger, maybe resentments, maybe bad thoughts, bad memories, breathe in His presence and breathe out His presence and He will embrace you, will tell you, do not be afraid. 